the microphone. Oh, I just wanted to say God bless you, Terry Lake, and God loves you. And there's a lot of people here in Arizona who feel that God has visited a miracle on us, that he's laid his hand on us and delivered us from the evil of killing babies in this, in this state. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why a lot of people supported you is because we thought you were with us on that. We, we thought that when you said you supported the 1864 ban, you meant it. And then when the Supreme Court came out and delivered that miracle to this country and freed us from evil, you changed your mind. I want to know what you say to people who trusted you and believed in you and believed that you were as much in love with the babies in this world as them and then feel that Arizona has undergone a miracle. Why are you against that miracle? Well, let me thank you for the question. First of all, I am for life, and I, love, I want to save as many babies as possible. But you do realize that that law is not going to survive in November. You know what's on the ballot in November? God, God will make a miracle. There's a ballot on the November ballot that is written by a parent that will eventually lead to abortion up to nine months. So if we have a law that does not have even an exception for a nine-year-old or ten-year-old girl, that was a victim of incest, or a girl, young woman who's been raped. People in this state, I know them, and I'm not gonna tell you that you don't know them, but I know them real well. They are not going to support that, and they're gonna end up voting for nine months of, of, of abortion. And that is not an option. I will never be okay with an eight or nine month old baby being taken. And so sometimes we have to Look at the situation we're in. And it's real easy to be here at the five foot level and go, I'm right, you're wrong. But we have to take a step back. I'm not even talking 30,000 foot level. I'm talking step back six months from now. Are you going to be okay with nine month old babies being taken? Answer me. God won't allow it. God will. It will happen. The voters of the state will vote for that if there's not an exception for a 10-year-old who's the victim of incest. I want to save every baby. I can't imagine any circumstance that I would choose an abortion. But I'm not standing in the shoes of a woman who's been beaten by her sex, you know, her pimp. I'm not standing in her shoes, and neither are you. Are you standing in the shoes of a woman who has been the victim of a brutal rape? I'd like to think, and I say that I wouldn't ever choose abortion, and I'd like to think that in that situation I wouldn't. I have friends who were born who were conceived of rape. I'd like to think I wouldn't choose that, and I don't think I would, but I'm not in their shoes. And I'll tell you where the people of Arizona are want exceptions. And we have been given a deliberate gift, thank you to Donald J. Trump, that Roe v. Wade, an unconstitutional law, has been struck down. And now it's in our hands to decide what the future looks like. And the beauty of this moment, as difficult as it is, is we may not agree on everything. I think actually we agree more than you think. The beauty of this moment, as we have to grind through this difficulty, is that guess what? The extreme abortionists are not going to write the law. It's going to be the people who come together. And guess who has a seat at the table? You do. Pro-lifers like me have a seat at the table now. And we're going to have to figure this out. It doesn't mean we're going to get our way on everything. But the reason I talked about when I went to Hungary and I had an epiphany is because I, I wake up at 3 in the morning and I think, how can we help more women so they don't make that choice? And I had that epiphany when they didn't change a single law in Hungary, not one. They didn't change a law. You could have an abortion up until whatever, and they cut the number of uh, they cut the number of abortions in half. What is our goal? May I ask? Is our goal to have to ban abortion? Is our goal to have abortion up to nine months? Or is our goal less about what our law is and more about saving babies? My goal is to save babies. I'm not going to get wrapped up in fighting over a week, a law, ban, this, 
full abort, whatever it is. I'm not going to get caught up in that. I'm going to get caught up in how can we save babies. Well, we can cut the number of abortions in half. If we start getting lawmakers in Washington, D.C., whose number one priority is supporting families and women and giving women who find themselves in that position I just described, that I've never been in, thank you, God, that you've never stood in. It's really easy to be righteous and say that I would never have an abortion. And it's really hard to stand in the shoes of somebody who's been the victim of a violent rape. We, this, is a, this is a law that is not in step with where Arizona is right now. And it pains me. I want every single baby to survive. It pains me that somebody would make a decision to have an abortion, but I don't get to decide right now on this. This is in our lawmakers' hands. And I am absolutely pro-life. I'm going to do everything I can to save as many babies and help as many women. Thank you. And it's not easy. I wish I, could, I wish I could look at you and say, you and I, what we believe, we can get everyone to get there. But we've had 50 years of people We've lived with Roe v. Wade. We've got to bring the country around. We've got to start working on hearts and minds. And I love you for asking me that. And I, I encourage you to go to my uh, in social media. So I put it out. I want people to know where my heart is on this. Do you know how hard this, this, this uh, issue is for everybody? It's not easy. And I will tell you that when, when this is said and done, we're going to be saving more babies in America than losing them. And I hope someday we can save a lot.